Creating a Simple Cutout Animation Part 1 All of the animations seen in this video was created by Stacy Eberschlag. Since this video, the video detailing how to actually animate, is probably the most important video in the series, I thought that it would be best to have a professional animator with years of industry experience show you how it's done. I, on the other hand, will attempt to describe what it is that Stacy is doing while highlighting some of the key animating features in the software. So the first thing to note is that the animate mode is on, so that's the yellow circle in the left hand toolbar, five from the bottom, and that the transform tool is being used to perform the animation. If the animate mode is off, then using the transform tool would just be like repositioning the elements. So one of the square brackets was just used as a keyboard shortcut to change the hand drawing. And now the keyboard shortcut B is being used to go up the hierarchy chain from hand to forearm to arm. So here we notice that one of the patches were not complete for the left arm of the karate rabbit. So instead of creating a patch the way that we did in the rigging tutorial, Stacy will show you another way that you can create a patch for the arm. And that's by using the overlay layer module from the module library. So he just attached the karate rabbit left forearm to the overlay layer module. And is now hooking the overlay layer module to the composite. Then he's going to the drawing view and using the select tool to select the fill of the forearm sleeve. And now he's just selected the overlay layer. So there's the overlay layer, the line art layer, the color art layer, and the underlay layer. So he just pasted just the fill without the outline on that layer. And so now he's effectively created a patch over the black outline of the arm. So he just performed a flip there by using the keyboard shortcut 4 or 5 it's also in the tool properties panel that allows you to flip either horizontally or vertically. And once again, he's using B to go up the hierarchy chain. If you see the child get selected from the parent, so he just selected the forearm, but the hand was selected first, then he used shift B to select the child and then B to select the parent, so the upper arm. So every time you see the pink being selected, it's when uh, Stacy accidentally selects the background and the entire background gets lit up. So what Stacy is effectively doing is creating all of his key poses first, and he's doing them all at the beginning of the timeline one right after the other. Um, and the way that you can try to figure out what your key poses are is often by looking at real life uh, video of someone doing something similar to what you need. So in this case you could YouTube say the Karate Kid um, and watch the video again and again and then decide which are the most extreme poses and those would be your key poses. And then you can later pull apart your keyframes um, to create that anticipation and create the timing on your own. Um, I believe this is what Stacy's doing. He's not going to use any type of interpolation or what you might know as motion tweening to let the computer generate the movement between these key poses. He himself is going to make um, pauses and uh, decide when the character is going to flip between the poses um, just using stop motion keyframes to create his animation.
And although you can't see it, every time a body part is selected in the camera view with the transform tool, its subsequent layer is being selected in the timeline. So you can also directly select the timeline if you find it less confusing. Um, once again, you can't see any of this happen because the Karate Master group is collapsed in the timeline. So once again, he's scrolling through the various drawings that were created for the left hand. Um, you could also do this by going to the library after selecting the left hand layer for the Cardi Rabbit in the timeline view or in the camera view with the transform tool. And you can scroll through the library um, until you find the hand pose that you want. Uh, what Stacy's using is the keyboard shortcut, either the left or right square bracket, and that allows you to scroll through those drawings pretty quickly. And once in a while, sometimes you have to go to the drawing view to view a drawing on its own um, without it already having been, been rotated or composited in the camera view. So that's why Stacy just went to the drawing view momentarily. So what you just saw there was a cut that Stacy made while he was animating. Um, not much happened between, um, except that he created a new keyframe and now he's on to his third key pose. So you see him scrolling in the timeline between those keyframes um, and you can do that by using the keyboard shortcut semicolon and apostrophe um, if you want to flip between keyframes and if you want to flip between drawings every time there's a cut in a huge row of gray cells, um, it's a new drawing, you can use the keyboard shortcut F to go backwards and G to go forwards. So it seems like the operations that Stacy does most often are uh, selecting a body part using shift B or B to move up and down the hierarchy chain. Um, he seems to flip body parts a lot uh, using four or five. Um, also to move pivot points temporarily to rotate body parts using the transform tool um, to get them where he needs them to go. So I forgot to mention that you can also scroll back and forth um, between the keyframes using the two buttons that you see in the timeline toolbar, the KF with a burgundy back arrow and the KF with a burgundy forward arrow. So that lets you scroll back and forth between the keyframes. So Stacy just created a new keyframe, either by using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control F6, or by pushing on the button KF with a burgundy and white plus sign. There you go. Um, and he also validated the keyframe of um, 
his karate master group there was a white keyframe so it's hollowed out with a black outline which means something in that group is keyframed at that position but to be sure that you don't want to move anything else there um, you can add a keyframe on the top of your group so that a keyframe is inserted on every single layer or body part in that group. So sometimes when you're animating, you realize that there's a hand position or a body part position that you need that hasn't been already created for you. So in order to do that, you need to duplicate a drawing, which I don't know if you just saw that, but Stacy clicked on the second icon in the Timeline View toolbar, the Duplicate Drawing button. Um, and from that duplicated drawing, you're able to then change the drawing and create your own drawing, so a new drawing. Um, the reason that you duplicate a drawing is, first of all, you get a base, so you're not starting from a zero, zero point, and the pivot, you know, remains in the same place, which is good. Um, but you also need to duplicate a drawing because if you draw on the drawing that already exists, then it'll change the original drawing throughout your entire animation. Um, so to create a new drawing, it's best to duplicate a drawing first. And if you look at a long row of gray cells, um, the moment that you duplicate a drawing, all it does is it creates a cut in that row of cells. That's letting you know that on one side of that cut you have your first drawing, the original, and on the other side you now have your new drawing, which is an identical copy of the original, but that you can modify without worrying about modifying every instance of the original drawing that appears throughout your animation.
And so here Stacy's using a, using a combination of the uh, eyedropper paint tool and fill tool and contour editor to create a thinner looking hand. And there we go. So now Stacy's created a hand that suits the angle that he needs to um, project. And it looks like he has to do it again for the second time. So he duplicated the drawing for this other hand. and is now creating a different angle for this hand. And he's also using the cutter to eliminate um, parts really quickly where there are intersections. And then you just added a point um, when you have the contour editor selected, you can use the command key to change your cursor and then it allows you to add a point onto your contour line and then pull it. Stacy just created another new keyframe, so he's continuing to make those key poses. Um, he's also validating the keyframes that he's already created by clicking again on the keyframe button.
So we're getting close here to the 25 minute mark. So I think I'm going to end the first part of creating a simple cutout animation part one here. I'm going to continue on um, for another 25 minute chunk in the next video. It's just going to be a continuation. So if you strung the videos together, uh, they would be pretty continuous. Uh, so you won't be missing anything in between.